Christmas Day was a big one at the box office with a lineup of highly anticipated movies released like The Color Purple and Ferrari. Going to the movies is a good way to spend the next few days before the new year. So our friend and film critic Rad is here to tell us what is worth watching in theaters right now. Good to have you with us, Rad. Good morning. Happy post-Christmas. Happy post-Christmas. Hey, we have a new adaptation of The Color Purple, mm -hmm. uh, except this time it's a musical. Here's what it sounds like. I am hooked already. Rad, what did you think of this? Uh, I mean, look, The Color Purple as a musical didn't really work for me, even though there was a lot to admire here. And of course, you know, this is, uh, you mentioned before we started talking that this is, uh, you know, Oprah's been wearing purple for many, many months because she does produce this, yeah. kind of get, having a victory lap for this movie that won her first Oscar, this and property. And then it went to the stage. It went to the stage. Yeah, exactly. So this is, an, this is not an adaptation of the book. It's not a, an adaptation of the previous movie. It's an adaptation of this Broadway musical. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, again, like really tough subject, right? If, you, if you're not familiar with the story of The Color Purple, I mean, this is a movie about violence against black women that's kind of recycled violence, cyclical violence from slavery. It's about intergenerational trauma. It's about misogynoir. And it's then, you know, t treating that as a musical was hard for me because I felt like the musical numbers often took away from the emotions of the story. And I get why they do that. I guess why they lean into that direction because like, you know, the previous movie directed by Spielberg starring Oprah, mm -hmm. that one leaned a lot into the violence and the trauma and the heaviness of it. Mm -hmm. And so alternatively, this one leans in the opposite direction where it's leaning into the musical numbers and the joy of the musical numbers. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a missed opportunity. If you wanted the warmer and more joyful version of The Color Purple, they should have leaned more into the into the lesbian romance between the characters. That's mm -hmm. a core part of the novel. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, that, that story about two women finding love in these difficult circumstances, that's the warmer way to go into it. And this movie was still as coy about that as both the Broadway musical and the previous okay. movie was. So Okay. But yeah. who is this movie for? Who would like this movie? I mean, I think if you love movies, Movies like Dreamgirls and, and Tick Tick Boom, which are like you know musicals oh, yeah. that handle heavier subject matter. If those were for you, this will just this is this will work for you, especially because this is if you're new to the color purple, this is this is absolutely a great way in. Like it's an easy way into the subject matter. Well, I'm gonna go see it, but clearly without you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ferrari tells the story of the man behind the famous vehicle. Is this one worth going to see? I feel like it's a lot of testosterone. This one's worth seeing with me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. So, like, if, if you don't want to watch *Color Purple*, we come watch with this movie. Yeah, look, this is about this is once again uh, Adam Driver butchering the Italian accent yet again oh. after *House of Gucci*, oh, oh, right? Yeah. But it's more palatable this time okay. because you know he's playing Enzo Ferrari during a really heavy period in his life. It's 1957. Ferrari's company's going bankrupt. He's mourning the loss of his eldest son. His wife, played ferociously by Penelope Cruz, is holding the cards to the business. Mm. And, she, and meanwhile, he, she, uh, his uh, his mistress, wants him to acknowledge. Her uh, their For son, existence. their new yeah. son. Yeah, so there's a lot going on here. And look, this is a movie about kind of the mess that's going on behind the scenes of a luxury brand. What I'm very fascinated with by, by this is that it, this is a movie made by the Ferrari of filmmakers. It's mm -hmm. a Michael Mann movie. If you know Michael Mann, this is the guy that made The Insider, he made Heat, he made Collateral. His movies are as sexy and slick as the surface of a Ferrari, but there <laughs> is that absolutely roaring engine beneath because his movies are very philosophical and stuff. And so, you know, for me, this was an interesting kind of self-portraiture from someone like Michael Mann, okay. who, you know, dr a little dramatically alert, nerd. It's not quite as, like, say, big as Ali and stuff and, and epic as his previous movies, but there's still something lovely about his storytelling and, and fi him finding sort of an access point to the, in this character. Who will like this movie other than you, obviously? Other than me, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a small window of people who love the movies Mank and The Lost City of Z, which are passion projects by incredible filmmakers, like, de endearingly flawed passion projects. Oh, you love those ones. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, The Boys in the Boat is directed by George Clooney. Uh -huh. Tell us a bit, if people aren't familiar with the story, what's this about? I mean, this is an underdog sports story, kind of a classic old, old school trope of like, you know, these guys, working class guys from uh, uh, like the 19th, like coming off the Great Depression who decide to join, who decide to ride crew, right? And they mm -hmm. end up competing in Nazi Germany during the Olympics, representing America, but also competing against rich kids. So really feel good underdog story from director George Clooney, who once again keeps makes me ask, why does he keep directing? Directing movies? Oh. Like, well, it's, it's George Clooney. I don't know if you know, this is like his ninth movie now, and the man is a dull filmmaker, right? Oh. And it's like, it's like, you know, this is the kind of movie that like is is, is 
is, is not, nothing particularly bet wrong with this movie. It's a feel-good underdog story that has worked. It leans into all the tropes that fit a Lifetime movie. Okay. And I'm like, George Clooney, you had such an interesting acting career in movies like Out of Sight and No Brother Where Art Thou. You work with these daring artists like Terrence Malick, yeah. and then you become a director making movies for my grandparents. Oh. I don't understand. Okay. Well, other than your grandparents, who is this movie for? I mean, uh, is, uh, is there anyone else but my grandparents? People who love movies like Unbroken and Invictus, which are also underdog sports movies dealing with some historical subject matter directed by actors who should really be sticking to acting. Okay, Rad. I'm glad that we got the roundup from you. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.